back for the second half of our lively Thursday show with a couple of really popular ex-players, fan favourites they were in well, almost wherever they were. Tommy Lee, uh, of course, uh, a great legend of uh, Chesterfield Football Club, now started a new job as the uh, goalkeeping coach at Sheffield Wednesday's Academy and the former Sheffield Wednesday star, Miguel Liera, who works as Chesterfield's under-18s coach. James, Greg joins us for part two. We're very lucky, in fact, to have a full compliment here this evening. Do you realise that? Right, OK. Ex very lucky. Expand on that. One of our two guests had to pass a, a, a late fitness test, right? And he had to say that in order to correctly, in order to pass the fitness test, didn't you? You can say, I have passed the late fitness test. I had a little bit of an incident. Uh, I bit my tongue uh, right. quite badly. Uh, so uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing that I've managed to make it, I'm here nonetheless. I have seen it. Viewers have it. It's horrendous. It's, it's graphic. You, it? You've yeah. virtually bitten off a quarter of it. Mm. How on earth did you manage? This was only yesterday. It was it? yesterday, yeah. I was just uh, tucking into my dinner and chomp down and yeah tongue uh, and chips was it or something could have been yeah yeah oh. yeah I, I think i swallowed half of it and uh yeah but i managed to get here alan so thank you so i can't believe you've been a professional goalkeeper and you obviously putting your body on the line getting your head in and all that kind of stuff and you've never bitten your tongue before and then you sit and eating your lunch and there you go you got do, do you know what I, I never have but i'm sure miguel has at some point those defenders head in the yeah. ball yeah it, it happens quite often but yeah. Uh, you took a hell of a nice. chunk out of that. Not nice. You really did. I was quite concerned. I got this message from him this morning. First mm. thing is the most normal. When I get a, a message from the guest, the text from a guest, on the day of a show, I think, oh, I'm not, not going to read this. And I was thinking, look, this is the most unusual excuse yeah, I weird. have ever read in <laughs> yeah, my yeah. life. He's here, though. He's, you know, he's articulate. He's here. Yeah. It's great. It's great <laughs> to see you. I mean, there's many an occasion when uh, I should have bitten my tongue. Yeah, um, I didn't want to say anything like that, to be fair, mate. <laughs> yeah, you've got a very busy roundup a bit later in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, just a bit. OK. Um, <laughs> an ex-player of, Mar uh, just to round off on Martin Allen we were talking about, and Miguel, Leo is a big fan, mm -hmm. uh, works, works with him every day. Um, an ex-player played for him at Barnet, who shall remain nameless, or happened to uh, bump into this, this week, was just full of praise for him. And bear in mind this was a private conversation, I think it carries more weight because if a player doesn't like an ex-manager in a private conversation, you'll, you, you'll know about we'll it. We'll tell you, yeah. And he said that he and most of the players who play for Martin think the world of him. There's, th there's that loyalty there. And never does that come through more, perhaps, Miguel, than in a spell like now when the team has gone 13 without a win. Yeah, I think, I think that he has the, the chingiru in his way, you know. I think that the, from the first day, he, he, the, uh, the thing that he tried to do is to make a, a strong, really strong group. Mm. And he, yeah, he's the person that is dealing with the group, and managing the group. Um, no, he don't let to everybody be close to the player. It's, I think that he created a, a scenario like the group and him, they are really close and very strong. Um, and I think it's vital in situation like now. No, he, uh, he has the changing room in his, his side, even with the result is not the best one. Mm -hmm. But I think that things like that are gonna make the situation change because the team is performing well and he, uh, he he's really close. The team is really close to start to winning games. And I think that the uh, the, time, the, uh, the moment that he get, get, uh, win the first game, more will come. Mm, there's a mutual loyalty there, certainly. Yeah. I, I saw it in a home game against Maidenhead, which Chesterfield lost, unfortunately, I thought, by 3-1. I thought a 2-2 would have been a fairer balance. The goalkeeper, unfortunately, had a, a bad night there, and uh, every goalkeeper does now and again. But he stood there, and there were calls for his head. There were one or two shouting, resign to him. But he just stood with a broad back on the touch line, didn't react to any of it, and, and simply shook every player's hand as they came off the field. I thought that was a big gesture. I really, really did. No, absolutely. I, that, uh, and with you touching that off air now, uh, just before, sorry, uh, Martin Allen needs to be given time. I think the football club's gone through managers uh, a lot recently, and, it, and results haven't changed too much. So you've got to give the, the person in charge at the minute, who happens to be Martin Allen, as much time as possible, because mm. we, we've mentioned his record. Miguel's touched on the relationship he's got with the players. At some point, that's going to change. 
Mm, I'd go along with that, certainly without having had to endure the agony that a lot of uh, supporters have, you know, when you've, you think you're as low as you're ever going to get and then it, you go lower mm. still. It's a huge shock to the system, but still 3,000, 4,000 are turning up, which is, which is fantastic, isn't it, really? We're talking about goalkeepers in part one, James, and how the yeah. role of a goalkeeper's changed. You know, I saw Cameron Dawson, who's a friend of yours, I yeah, know, yeah, yeah. down at uh, Sheffield Wednesday's training ground today. And clearly, Jos Lukai is looking for him, not to replicate what Jordan Pickford does, because Pickford's doing it outstandingly well, but when Cam gets stick occasionally from fans, they don't understand that he's acting to orders in... I was just about to say that. I think quite often fans, you know, that they'll go, oh, he never comes out for corners or whatever. Quite often now, you know, you might, you'll know more on this than me. Modern goalkeeping, the, you know, it depends where you are, I suppose, but being told to stay on the line a bit more. And then other, you know, the time it comes, comes and goes, he's not very good with his throat. He doesn't kick it far enough or whatever. He's got he's, he's throwing it out. Feet, exactly. Right exactly. Right you know, he's both footed. Yeah. I think that's the thing. He's grown up and it's hard work, isn't it? It's, you know, it's, putting in those hours of practice and stuff. What, what is that thing? Is it right? You know, I, don't, I genuinely don't I know. Think, I think, in my experience, if you were to get ask a fan from every single football league club uh, about their goalkeeper, you'd get, I'm pretty sure, the same answer. Great shot stopper, doesn't come for crosses. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it's what I've heard throughout my career. I never used to come for crosses, although I did. But yeah. because I used to drop the odd one, I can't c catch crosses. You had a policy you know, to stay at home when you could, didn't you? Well, I, or punch it? It, it or was all, my, my uh, uh, approach to that was, if I feel I can catch the ball, I'll always come and catch it. Uh, and the majority of goalkeepers will have that. Some goalkeepers are better than others at doing that, but I think, especially f from a fan's point of view, it'd be interesting to see, but the one thing they would say would be, great shot stopper doesn't come for crosses. And that isn't true. All so, goalkeepers, if you're a professional, Especially in the championship and higher, if you don't leave your line and come for crosses, then you're not going to be it's at like that a, level. It's a weird yeah. sort of fans like idiosyncratic kind of approach, isn't it? You it know, they're watching weird. it. They want to see hard tackling, the goalkeeper coming for crosses, mm. and everyone giving 110 yeah, percent and all that stuff. They used to come for crosses that. more than they do now. I think, I think, the, the, and that's a lot to do with the way the, the game's changed. The ball swerving. Uh, the, the People ball, tell me. Yeah, I mean, the the balls are different. Uh, and to be honest, not many. What? He's laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, yeah, laughing. Yeah. He's been dying. He's been dying. I'll tell you what. Listen, listen, listen. I'll tell you what it is. Right. I tell. I tell you. In my, in my opinion, it's more difficult for a goalkeeper to come and catch crosses now than it was 20 years ago. Yeah. Come on, for various go. reasons. Come on. Miguel. But they still do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm laughing because the, the me for to be centre back, the goalkeeper in UK didn't help me too much to do my job. You know what I mean? And then I, I, when I watch every Wednesday, uh, Chris Kirla never go out to catching crosses. Chris out, Kirkland. Yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, who, who played for Liverpool. In England, yeah. yeah. In England. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. I, I agree with you. Yeah. But he never came to catch a cross. He I, did my job so I, difficult. He made your job difficult. Yeah, yes. when the cross is good cross into the six-year ball, for yeah. example. He left it to you. He thought you could do yeah, it. Yeah, he said... But do you know how important it is I, now from my now in coaching? I like the goalkeeper. Don't be brave and try to catch it, even if he, if he made a mistake. I, I, I am proud from the keeper. Don't try to, when the cross is coming, try to be brave and catch it, maybe, even if he made a mistake. Because yeah. I know that me, like a central back, when I was playing, how many crosses coming into the box for a central back when the quality, quality cross is so difficult to defend it. Yeah. You understand me? And then I remember the, the day that I scored an own goal when I played uh, Sheffield Wednesday against uh, Forest. He was in goal. It was a great cross in swinger. And I knew he did, he didn't gonna come in to, to punch him. And then I, uh, I scored on goal because I was in the situation what I'm doing. Yeah. Or, or make the header yeah. or leaving. Yeah. I had to make the header, even if it was goal, because I knew that he wasn't going to come in to, to catch it. It's fantastic, isn't it, to hear these two opposing views? I was going to say, I think as soon as we brought that up, you know, that was it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love the goalkeeper than coming and catch it. I think that it shows personality, and I think that it's a, it's a great... It's a great uh, don't, you don't go find too many goalkeepers brave enough uh -huh. to go to dealing with crosses. So you're not picking him? No, well, not, if I have to decide, <laughs> I, I prefer the keeper in my team, be brave, even if he made a mistake. Because I think in the long term, he's going to save more 
that made mistakes they're going to make on conceding goals. This is interesting. What do you, how, how do you rate the two? I know you don't work with Cameron Dawson and Joe Wildsmith directly, but how, how would you compare those two um, and, and, and your rating of them? Well, they're both very good young goalkeepers. I have worked with, with the pair of them on a couple of occasions up there. and. Uh, the, the, it's spot for choice, really, a manager up there. Uh, there, there are three excellent goalkeepers uh, at the club, and I think Cammy has taken his chance this season, and I think he has adapted to the style of play the manager wants brilliantly, and he's only going to get better. He's still a really young player uh, mm. when, you, when you think of his age and, and the maturity of a goalkeeper. He's probably got another five or six years until he reaches that. He's 23, so, I think. Yeah, 20, yeah 23 year old. So I think. As far as goalkeepers are concerned at Sheffield Wednesday, yeah, the, the, the spot for choice at the minute. Mm. Uh, what about this distinct position of, uh, of goalkeeping? I, I often hear current and former goalkeepers say, look, you know, the pundits, the experts on TV, they criticise keepers about letting in at their near post, whatever. Unless you've played in goal, you can't understand the position. That's what they say. Sorry about that, Miguel. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. no, no, that's no. what that people say all the time. Um, do you subscribe to that? Do you go along with that? To or a certain not? extent, yeah. I think there is a lack of goalkeeping punditry on, on TV at the minute. And uh, I think it was Jan Luigi Buffon who, who said something recently that he wouldn't go into a, a doctor's surgery and criticise the operation he's doing because he doesn't do that job. I think that's fair enough. Uh, David Priest, who, who was on Twitter, who, who was a former goalkeeper, writes superbly about goalkeepers yes. and, and explains the points. And you mentioned getting beat at the near post. It's a little bit of a bugbear of mine as well, uh, because if a strike is good enough to beat you at the near post, then if you're central, the same strike will still beat you in the same place. But because goalkeepers shouldn't get beat at the near post, it's a mistake. And I think just little things like that, I think... Uh, I think it's changing, and I think the more goalkeepers we can get on TV explaining these things, I think the less we'll hear of, oh, it doesn't come for crosses, or oh, yeah. it doesn't kick yeah. it far enough, or... Oh, oh, dear, Miguel. Yeah. No, I think that, yeah. <laughs> I think that goalkeeping, obviously, is the most difficult the position on the pitch. Yeah. More responsibility have. And it's so difficult. Not everybody uh, can play like a goalkeeper. And then uh, I like the goalkeeper that have show uh, personality into the pitch. I think that it's a big role into the team. Well, and, um, I'll tell you what, now goalkeepers are starting to play with their feet like outfield players. They can be criticised for that, the footwork, by anybody. Absolutely. By anybody. Mm. But it, it also strikes me that, you know, when you, when you watch a game, and, and you'll be watching it probably slightly differently now that you're coaching rather than playing, if you're really going to be accurate about the goalkeeper, you've almost got to take your eye off the ball and watch the keeper at all times. He's positioning when the ball's at the other end and stuff like that. Because you, you, most of us watch the ball and then the goalkeeper comes into our vision only when he's involved in the game. Yeah, I is think, that, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, the analysis we do at Wednesday now is fantastic. Each player, uh, after every game and after quite a lot of training sessions, they're individually clipped so they can watch uh, how they're performing. But, uh, especially for a goalkeeper, probably for 80 minutes of the game, they're not on, in the picture. Uh, no. So, yeah, you do have to watch for s uh, start positions, set positions. When the ball's up the other end of the pitch, are they, are they communicating with the defenders? Are they organising, uh, as Miguel touched on before? So, uh, it, it, it's, it's a totally different sport within football. Mm. Fascinating stuff. We'll, we'll come back for more. Yeah. Um, but there's plenty else going on, James. There is, thank goodness, that international break's over as well, by the way. Because it was just, oh, you know, I mean, it was good. You know, the England against Spain yeah. the result was, was, yeah, was good, actually. Terrific, I'm looking yeah. at Miguel, actually, for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back on that. Yeah, right. we'll, yeah, we'll come back to that, definitely. <laughs> um, half five kickoff yeah. for the Blades away at, Dar um, away at Derby on Saturday. But before that, the Owls kick things off after that international break. Quarter to eight at Hillsborough against Borough. Uh, both sides in the top six and exceeding all expectations so far. I'm sure you'd agree with that one. Both uh, Wednesday and United fans, I think both teams are pleasantly surprised yeah. to see where both of them are yeah, sitting. Yeah, it's terrific. Long um, way to continue. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Long way to go, though, yet. Yeah. Uh, Blades ladies away at Charlton on Sunday. Last time out, of course, they smashed Villa 4-1 at Bramall Lane as well. So good luck to Carla and Co on Sunday. Uh, it's a non-league. Well, it was a fruitful non-league day, wasn't it, last week? Um, 
and last Saturday, all the, sort of the local teams were in action. We sort of went through all the teams and all the fixtures. And I think that, well, I'm not sure whether we paid a, played a small part in the attendances being high. We, but we there, was, there was a special mention to attendances. 403 went to watch Hallam. Uh, biggest uh, since uh, 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 matching the FA Vars a couple of years ago. 271 went to Staveley. Uh, 114 at Kiverton Park. It's a new ground record for them. And 525 people went to watch Worksop Town as well. And Alan, that wet your appetite. You went to watch Helm on Tuesday night, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I went to watch Helm in the Sheffield Jubilee uh, Sport. Senior Cup. Yeah, on Tuesday night. A heroic performance from uh, Jubilee Sports, who were a couple of divisions mm. at least below, um, almost uh, won it. Mm. Late goal in normal time and two more in extra time for, for Helm. Mentioning those crowds there, um, Penniston, Ch I get stick from yeah. a couple of well-known supporters of Penniston Church. Yeah. One of them who was a guest last week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they had a couple of hundred last Saturday. Brilliant as well. Um, and the workshop manager Craig Denton is going to be in on this show in good. November. Excellent. Look forward to that. Look yeah. forward to that. Uh, very interesting. Yes, it was good, to, you know, to see so many people going and engaging and watching. Uh, those games. Um, Hallam have got East Yorkshire Carnegie on Saturday at Sandygate and a trip to Lincolnshire for Sheffield Club. Uh, they've got Spalding United. They drew 0 0 on Tuesday. In 24 hours' time, it's uh, tip off for the Sheffield Sharks at the English Institute of Sport against Glasgow in the BBL. It's a rugby union. We've not talked about this for a while, but we'll do now because it's uh, sort of nationally we're looking towards the autumn internationals. Injuries for England everywhere. We won't go into that, dear me, but uh, national to north side, Sheffield Tigers. They've got Otley, 3 p.m. on Saturday. Um, and, of course, their relegation uh, rivals last season were Sheffield Rugby Club just down the road at Abbeydale. They're at home, too, on Saturday against Luctonians. They're looking to bounce back after a defeat last week. And we'll talk about the Steelers as well to finish things off. Um, a big weekend doubleheader for them. They lost against Fife last night, 3-1 at the arena. They've got Cardiff away from home on Saturday evening and on Sunday. They've got Manchester. It's a 4 p.m. face-off, and they're hoping to be back full strength for the weekend. So... Big weekend for them, and 4 p.m. I think that's quite a good time. You know, if you've got kids yeah, and you yeah. want to take them down, you can get them sort of to bed and all that kind of stuff afterwards. So, yeah, yeah good luck to them. Um, and then new coach, of course, Tony Barrasso. Hopefully, he can yeah, turn Tom, things around. Yeah, yeah. Tom Barrasso, isn't it? He, uh, he's had two games, two defeats so mm, far, but yeah. so he's having to try and yeah. battle to turn that around. James, thanks very much. No worries. Yeah, yeah, you touched the nerve. I you mentioned he, was looking, he gave me a yeah, look. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. So, how, was that a shock to you? As, a, as big a shock to you as a, as a Spaniard as it was was to us? England's three-two win. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, Spain is getting a new manager now, but uh, putting focus the most important in England. I think that uh, after the World Cup. I see a, a, a pretty big similarity in between both them because I think that after the World Cup, then England did, uh, they gave a massive step forward because always when England was playing against top teams, looks like they was a little bit worse than the other, and now they are play, playing face to face, and then I think that uh, they have to 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 work on each other, knowing that he can beat them. Yeah. I think that it's a big uh, belief thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Big belief thing. Great well, football. I, I wanted as well. to ask as well because you know, like the international break. I mean, I found it tedious, and it didn't help that England no. had a game behind closed doors as well because it's just like no atmosphere. But the Nations League is that? Do you reckon that that it probably hasn't already? But do you reckon that will make these friendlies a little bit more interesting? Will it make it? more exciting for fans? Does yeah. it mean something, do you think? I think that, for, for example, in Spain, the attendance was in the, the stadium. In England yeah. plays my former team, Betis. It was 45, 50,000 people in the stadium. Wow. I think that that competitiveness that they are doing is it's not the same uh, for the fans in a friendly game, see Andorra yeah. versus England and Spain versus England. I think yeah. that it's, it's beneficial it's because at times the, the player was to attending the games, the international games, so thinking more and don't get injured. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Than yeah. in come back fit than in yeah. play for the national team. I think it's a big push, uh, even important. for the fans. So yeah. Shall we finish with Sheffield Wednesday uh, in, the, in, the, in the last four minutes? So you've, you've, got, you've got that in common. They're at home to Middlesbrough this Friday. Miguel, did, did you honestly, genuinely expect? The team to challenge for promotion this season, or I think that they are doing right. Yeah, they're and, doing. and the most important thing they are building up a team for the future. 
bringing in very young players in, and they are giving a, a great, a great uh, performance for, for the club. No? I think that it's something that the club didn't do it with Carl, under Carlos uh, Carvajal management because I think that they was investing a lot of money, they was they needs were sold and they wasn't they didn't know the academy and they didn't put any focus in the academy. Uh, obviously like he said, he wasn't brave enough to, to, to do it. No, and this uh, the manager that is uh, now is is fully uh, believe in the, at the academy. He has been because uh, I think he's a he's a person that has been monitoring what the young player have been doing. Carlos didn't pay attention at all to the academy, and then and then he's, he's a person that he go to to have a look at the games, and they are bringing in player into the academy. It's a big push push for the player and the motivation. And for for looking forward for playing to the first team, they are doing well, and I think that uh, they're going to be a, a, a big push and going to be fighting for for to be in the top. You do, you do, yeah, yeah it's, it's for real. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Jordan Thornley is a player who plays well. He can play in several positions, actually. Um, well, you could, <laughs> you could as well. He scored a fair number of goals, but he he has been particularly impressive since coming in, Jordan Thornley. What, what what's your view of of, of him? Yeah, he's doing, he's doing really well. No, I think that he has the confidence of the manager. Like I say, when one, one young player coming into the first team, fully confident because he's doing well. Uh, it's a lot of work from the people that is have been uh, around him uh, because it's not easy to play his body with atmosphere, play, atmosphere playing championship. Yeah. And, um, it's, a, it's a big uh, step big forward thing. for him, and then it's a lot of people around him doing a great job. Um, that's why the, 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 the young people is performing well for the first thing. Yeah, and Matt Penny as well. You know, I've started contract talks with him. It's important to keep these, these younger players as well. Won't get you involved in the politics of that, but you know, a couple have uh, escaped. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they'll want to nail down you know, prospects like him. Um, how many more? I, I, I've never known a season. You know, I've been covering uh, the two Sheffield clubs for a long time, but I've never seen 11 or 12 introduced to a first-team squad within a year. Well, it's actually less than a year since this manager took charge. That is astonishing. Have you ever seen that anywhere in either of your careers? So many at one no, time? No, no, no. Uh, more recently in, in England, I no. didn't see nothing like that in my time for Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, we didn't bring any, any young player into into the first team in my four four three or four year playing there not too many young players Liam Palmer yes was into who, the first team who doesn't get the credit he deserves actually uh, in, in my view is a, is a steady operator on that right hand side and like so many there he is adaptable mm. isn't he I think it, that, that's got to be the way now uh, you spend all these monies on money on academies to get players to play the way the manager wants the football club to play. You bring them th through, you spend a lot of money on these players, and then they get to the under-23s and the, the manager doesn't want to play them. I think it, it makes a mockery of the academy system if you're not using that resource. And uh, I'm just glad that I'm at a football club now where the manager is using that resource and he's getting rewards for it. And you've got to give credit to, to Thornley and, and Penny and Preston and, and there's players knocking on the door. And there are some very, very good young players who aren't far off uh, getting in that first team squad. That's great to hear. And thank you so much for the last... Uh, your tongue has uh, survived. I, it, it's passed that fitness test. Yeah. 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 yeah, the drugs yeah. are wearing off. Yeah, got yeah. <laughs> just about, yeah. Well, it's been great seeing you both again. And, uh, and, and, and thanks very much, Miguel. And thank you, Tommy. Thank you, and James, as well. Thank you to you for being out there watching. Uh, if you've just come in and you missed any of this, it's repeated on Sheffield Live at 11 p.m. And it's also this evening on my YouTube channel. Um, I hope you can join us for another show next week. See you then. Bye.